Congratulations, you've entered the game. Huh? What game? That's not good. The rules are simple. There are two cameras, the Canon R8 and Sony ZV-1. You've got two hours to shoot a video with each camera. If you fail to do so, well, see for yourself. Huh? What about me? I don't even have a camera. What the hell? Are you okay, man? Forget it, we have to play the game or we end up like him. I guess you're right. So we got two hours, right? Yeah. So I, I would say let's go shooting now and then we meet here again in one hour to change cameras. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Okay. All right. test on the Canon R8 should be any wobble in the corners now I'm only using the lens stabilization no electronic image stabilization so far I really like this camera I mean it's not perfect there could be a joystick for example and generally even a few more buttons but I have everything that I really need and considering how small and lightweight this camera is while still having a viewfinder 4k 60 frames per second over sample etc could actually become my new main camera I have to see about that in the future though but I really love this camera so far. What time is it? Oh, okay, I should better hurry up to come back to the starting point. Man, I thought you're not coming. Yeah, it took a bit longer. I had to take a few more shots. Yeah, I understand. Let's switch cameras. Wait, why should I trust you? Why wouldn't you trust me? Okay, I would say let's place both cameras on the ground and we walk in a circle. That's fair for everyone, yeah? All right, sounds fair. Okay, you see, we're both getting out of here. Okay, let's not waste any more time. Okay. on the ZV-E1 now. There is a lot that I like about this camera. Lots of great functionalities. Dynamic range, picture quality obviously is great. Also you can bake in LUTs that is actually huge. There are like, for, especially for creators that don't want to get too deep into editing and learning camera etc there are lots of great ai features and so on but this is also the point while under the hood it's definitely a pro camera it's not a pro camera from the outside like it feels a bit like a toy for me it's like a wolf in sheep clothes and that's why i don't really enjoy using it there's no viewfinder the camera doesn't really really handle nicely like i constantly have to use the touch screen etc so it's definitely not a camera for me but anyway so i have to stop here when a bit farther away still enough time though but i have to go back yo you're there already got everything yeah it was actually easier than i thought and you how did you like the sony well i mean i shot the a7s3 already before and technically the zv1 is exactly the same camera so i know how good the video quality is that you can get out of it i mean getting that for 2200 dollar and in such a nice small body it's definitely awesome especially when you combine it with these uh, Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter lens like this setup it's it's yeah, this is one of the main reasons I got this camera because it's so small and light I mean uh, this is it's like perfect for vlogging etc because you don't have to carry much however what I must also say I, I don't like the body overall I mean at first of course the, the mm. grip it definitely doesn't grip as nice as the Canon R8 yeah true and I'm personally a big fan of viewfinders I know like you probably don't yeah, use it as much I don't really use it I just use the screen to expose it's much easier for me. Actually, when I had the Sony a7 IV, never once I used the viewfinder. That, that's like the thing, like, I, I know many people that shoot video don't use viewfinders, but I use it all the time because 
puts me a bit closer to the scene so I mm. feel, feel like more connected to my shot and especially on bright sunny days then oftentimes you can't really see well on the screen and then like just quickly looking through the viewfinder makes such yeah. a big difference for me. I actually like the Canon R8 body more especially considering that it's 20 gram less. Not that you really notice that but considering that it has a viewfinder etc. But the lenses are heavy. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> like the thing. The lenses on Canon are definitely heavier. Yeah. And then there's also another thing which is actually a deal breaker for me which is that it only has 12 megapixels instead of 24 on the r8 because the moment you use any like crop mode or crop functionality such as they a their ai tracking functions etc then it basically becomes yeah. unusable for me because if i see the video on either my MacBook Pro or my 27 inch monitor, I can definitely tell that it's not native 4K resolution anymore. And this is what I want. Don't really notice that on a smartphone or if you have shots where the subject is really close, but for everything else, you definitely notice that. Yeah, I guess if you use the clear image zoom, it crops like by 1.5, then it turns the image to 1080p instead of 4K. Yeah. I mean, it up upscales to 4K, but it still doesn't look like native 4K. Here, for example, I have the 17 to 28 now. And because I can't add an additional crop, I'm limited to maximum 28 millimeters here. While on mm. Canon cameras, I, I now have the 15 to 35 millimeter. If I then add the 1.6 X APS-C crop on the Canon, I get around 55 millimeters at the, at, at the tele end of this lens. So I essentially only need one lens to get all of my footage. And even if I would use a 16 to 35 millimeter lens on the Sony, I would be limited to 35 millimeter if yeah. I want to have native 4K. Resolution. And also, I guess for photography, yeah. it's better to have 24 megapixels, right? Yeah. So. That's the next thing. If you want to do photography or shoot time lapses, and also clearly the R8 is better. Yeah. It's not that the Sony ZV-E1 or SMS3 or so shoot bad photos, they also look good, but you can't crop much. Like I think for photography, it's, it's still fine, like for YouTube thumbnails, Instagram, etc. Yeah. But the moment you want to shoot time lapses, for example, where I sometimes add a 2x crop and stuff, then I definitely need... Yeah, and also this camera doesn't have a mechanical shutter, so... Yeah. I mean, this, this doesn't have either. It's ah, the yeah. first, first curtain shutter. So it's like for sports photography, uh, or maybe if you shoot with flash, then yeah, the yeah. R8 is also not that good. Like in this regards, they both suck. Um, but yeah, for like normal photography, R8 is definitely better. So yeah, I can perfectly understand why many people would prefer the Sony ZV-E1 over the R8. It's a powerful camera, definitely. But I think like for myself and I also think many travel vloggers, etc., mm. especially if you also want to do photography, the R8 is actually the better option, especially if you use it with those lighter and cheaper F4 lenses, etc. But yeah, what do you think about those cameras? Well, for that, you have to check out my videos on the R8 and the ZV-E1. I'll leave links in the description box below. Okay. The game has officially ended. Congratulations, you both completed the mission on time. So, can we go now? You're qualified for stage two. What, what does that mean, stage two? How many hours you spent planning this video? Uh, a lot. That's why you remember every single detail. Yeah. Daniel, we made it! Time to get up! <laughs> Sleeping already? <laughs> we are so 